Hello and welcome to Talking Tolkien. You've probably seen quite a lot on this channel as to how we've looked at the history of Middle Earth, which was a 12 book series um, edited by J.R.R. Tolkien's son Christopher, which basically covered the entirety of uh, Tolkien's output from his very earliest writings and after the, the First World War to, to the writings at the end of his life. And that encapsulates things like the writing of Lord of the Rings. But reading that, you might notice that there's one notable omission. And that is that throughout that, there's no mention of the writing process for The Hobbit. And the reason for that is when The Hobbit was created, it wasn't, Tolkien didn't really envisage it as part of this wider legendarium, as, as he referred to it. So Christopher Tolkien uh, didn't go into that when he compiled History of Middle-earth. However, there was a lot of appetite to see um, Tolkien's creative mind behind that and the, the writings that he did. So in 2007, um, Christopher Tolkien passed over the responsibility for that work to someone else and that's what we'll be looking at today. First of all, I'd just like to say thanks to everyone for the lovely comments that I got after the last video. It's great to be back and um, yeah, hopefully we'll carry on making some more videos. So the man charged with compiling J.R.R. Tolkien's notes for The Hobbit uh, was a gentleman called John D. Ratliff. He was um, studying in the, the university right next to where Tolkien's manuscripts had been sent in the, in the United States of America. And he'd done a lot of work with those as well as supported Christopher Tolkien in writing some sections of the history of Middle-earth regarding Lord of the Rings. So he had a good understanding of those papers. So yeah, Christopher Tolkien entrusted that task to him. When it was first released, the history of The Hobbit, as it, the wider um, work was known, it came in two parts. We get this first part here, the history of The Hobbit, Mr. Baggins. This was the original hardback that came out. And then after that, we get this one, which was um, Return to Bag End. So they were released, as I said, 2007. And in these, the, there was loads of information and drafts of the, the book that hadn't really been seen before, drafts of The Hobbit that hadn't been seen. So it's worth going back as well. And so The Hobbit was published in 1937 before Tolkien had really given thought to this wider mythology of Middle-earth. So it was kind of retconned, if you like, when um, Lord of the Rings was, was being written and finalised. And Tolkien realised that some of the stuff he'd put in The Hobbit didn't quite make sense in the wider context of Lord of the Rings. For instance, when Gollum just gives the ring away. He wouldn't have done that if the ring had the, the power over him. So he... Um, he rewrote that section, that chapter, Riddles in the Dark, um, and a new version of The Hobbit was published in 1951. Uh, a little bit later on in 1960, after The Lord of the Rings was out and had met with a lot of critical acclaim and popularity, Tolkien thought that it made The Hobbit look a little bit childish in comparison, and he decided to rewrite the entire book and bring its tone darker and more, um, more in touch with The Lord of the Rings itself. However, he didn't feel that was very successful and felt it took some of the, um, the spirit out of The Hobbit. So that, that version in 1960 wasn't published. However, it is released in these books, so we are able to go back now and, and read that. Uh, there's also, in these books, there's an earlier version of, or earlier drafts from The Hobbit. So all of this is in there and it's supported by um, John Ratliff's um, commentary as well. Similar to how Christopher Tolkien does it in The History of Middle-earth. It's those kind of things, just putting into context. So there's loads of stuff in there. Um, what other stuff have we got? There's a lot of illustrations as well. So there's some plates as well that we can show you here. Hopefully you can see some of those. And you can go back to drawings made by Tolkien. We know that the um, the publishers, Alan and Unwin, were, re were really keen on getting Tolkien to, to do the illustrations because they were impressed with some of the work that he'd already done. So he agreed to, to do that. So that's the history of The Hobbit. Now, I mentioned there were these two books that were first released, 2007, they were released individually. Um, I remember seeing them when I went to pick up The Children of Huron, so that came out around a similar time, I'm sure it did, because in the shop and I saw these as well in there, which when the internet wasn't as popular as it was now, I didn't even know this existed. So I um, happily snapped those up. Um, and then a few months afterwards, these were re-released in a box set with the Hobbit in the same kind of size in a lovely box set. I didn't get that 
um, and that's actually become quite valuable and quite hard to find now. So if you do have a copy of that, it's worth looking after. Um, and even these, I think these only had one printing maybe, so they're not um, they're not very widely seen either now, because they were replaced in 2011, so four years later, by a uh, one volume version, which was quite an unwieldy tome, but um, yeah, that, that came in a, a one volume version, which I have got, and I've looked everywhere for it, but I can't find it. So here's a picture of it, you have to trust me uh, on that one. And then that was it until this year, 2023, earlier this year, when HarperCollins announced that they were going to re-release it um, in a one version, one volume history, which goes along really in the same style as the books you can see over my shoulder. So the idea is it sits along those. Um, it's absolutely massive. It's, it's bigger than even the previous one volume version. I'm not sure if that's because the paper's a bit bigger. I, I presume it's, it's gonna be. Um, it's got um, this front, um, front cover, which is by Ted Nasmith. So that's, that's what we got in 2013. What's interesting about this is it's not a new version of the 2011 book. The, um, the ISBN is exactly the same. So again, be careful if you're hunting this down second hand. Uh, but what is different is inside where you have the uh, printing version. This one's, I got this first when it first came out and this is printing four. So I'm presuming that, um, that all the ones with four were the first editions of this new uh, colorful version. Uh, the previous one I had, I'm sure that was that had a one in, so I'm presuming there were three um, three versions of that one until number four. So that's what we get there. Um, so yeah, you also get it on Kindle, which is probably like, so if I was to read this, I'd probably read it on the Kindle version, which I got really cheap at some point. So there we have it. If you're really into The Hobbit, this is a great, um, great book to get. It's probably been, um, just by the nature of it, because obviously Tolkien wrote it as a children's book, so it's not had the analysis or the the depth maybe that, um, that Lord of the Rings has and how that fits into the wider mythology. But um, yeah, still an, a really interesting book. It's good to see some of those earlier drafts and uh, to see his kind of failed attempts to, um, to change the tone of the book. So that's what we've got here. Um, there was also, worth mentioning, there's also a deluxe version of this that came out this year, which again goes with those um, HarperCollins books that we've got at the moment. They're fine, but yeah, I didn't buy it. It's quite expensive. Um, if anyone's got any comments on that, if you do own it, let me know what um, what you think. Again, it, it was quite a quite a big book that. Um, but yeah, that's that's where we are with that at the moment. What what I'd like to see, I'd like to see these kind of covers almost re-released so that people were able to get something that was a little bit more readable than the one volume version, or even a um, an update of that box set. I don't know, maybe one day. Um, but yeah, that's that's what we've got for the history of the Hobbit today. Uh, I've put some links in below if you want to um, look up on Amazon. Feel free to use them. They're referral links. Probably the best way to support my channel. So thank you to anyone that um, that purchases through those. And um, yeah, thanks thanks again for watching. We'll be back soon uh, with some more Tolkien books. And um, thanks. <laughs>